freedom. The word we use to describe the condition and status of being free. It is also a virtue and a value some of us here vow to fight for. I tried to formulate a concrete meaning of what freedom means, yet I couldn't. Why? Simply because I have never experienced actual freedom. 25 years ago, I was born in Hong Kong at a time when the city was undergoing a transfer of sovereignty from the British to the notorious Chinese Communist Party. To pacify worried Hong Kongers who were fleeing out of the city at the time, the transition promised Hong Kongers a high level of autonomy for at least 50 years. However, in 2019, the fantasy of the one country, two system of the high level of autonomy was completely shattered by tear gas, by rubber bullets, by water cannon. Our city saw the widest series of protests, the harshest poli police violence, and the largest political crackdown. You see, at the time I was a college student studying here in the United States, I wanted to go home and fight alongside my friends on the front line, yet I couldn't. The sense of alienation and guilt was unbearable. How could I contribute to my home? And how could I be part of Hong Kong if I was not even in Hong Kong? And besides, I was never a part of any political party or student government in Hong Kong. So politics have always seemed so far out of reach. Yet, I found a way online. So I, someone that nobody knew, gathered a bunch of netizens that nobody knew to lead an international campaign. We all had silly aliases like Winnie the Poop or Baby C. And behind all these names, we were people like office clerks, artists, stay-at-home dads, or students like myself. Sure, we have been to protests before, but we have never really done anything bigger. Yet, in 2019, we crowdfunded millions of dollars within hours to post full-page advertisements in newspapers around the world. We were even targeting at global leaders at the G20 summit at the time. Can you imagine a bunch of netizens who didn't even know each other doing that together? And the entire process, from gathering the netizens to raising money to publicizing the ads, had over 150 volunteers, and it only took five days. Afterward, our army of netizens started monitoring on-the-ground, real-life police locations while reporting to our frontline protesters. Every day, I had to watch nine protest videos at the same time just to see where the police are stationed and where they're moving. And honestly, I felt like a CCP agent doing surveillance work at the time. But really, in 2019, we were building a new sort of movement that would reimagine Hong Kong society. That hopeful imagination, however, was short-lived. Not long after, the dictator struck with the national security law that would give the government authority to arbitrarily arrest anyone for absolutely anything. Right now, Hong Kong has more than 1,100 political prisoners, more than 10,000 political arrests, and many more fleeing and leaving out of the city. People I worked with got arrested. My team was disbanded. And all of a sudden, I became this odd duck or kind of a lone wolf in the overseas community. Nobody knew what I did or who I was. All this time, I was behind this anonymous profile, and I never really told anyone, not even my closest friends. Fear, trauma, depression, they sucked all the words out of me. There was so much I wanted to express all the time, yet 
So little I could actually say. Voluntarily, I have somehow put myself into a mental prison that caged up my own thoughts and my own words. And despite being physically free in the U.S., I was mentally imprisoned by the Chinese Communist Party. You know, freedom is not just about physical freedom. Freedom is about exercising your mental freedom. Freedom is about being able to leave your fears behind and act fearlessly. It reminds me of the 2019 movement in Hong Kong, where people would get rid of the conventions and hierarchy, they would think out of the box, and they would act fearlessly. And that, exactly, was what I did to escape from my very own mental prison. A few months ago, I came forth with my personal story as an anonymous activist for me to get rid of the fears that have captured me. But also, it was a political act to call upon other Hong Kongers, especially those who have been drenched in the same sort of fear to realize that they can still exercise a sort of mental freedom. And with that newly gained consciousness, we can start taking our destiny and our life back into our own hands by rekindling a sort of imagination. What kind of Hong Kong do you want to see? And that question applies to societies around the world as well. What kind of society do you want to see when the dictators are gone? And what about our global society? Now, this is an essential question. In places with dictators like the CCP, our mental capacity to think, really, is the most powerful weapon we can have against them. In history, we have seen how social movements win dictators one day, but on the next day, they lose to another one again. And to prevent that from happening, we all have to stretch our mind a little. So instead of focusing only on the regime we really, really, really want to take down, we also have to zoom out a little and think about the kind of society we actually want to see in the future. In my mind, a free Hong Kong is where every Hong Konger can be a proactive political actor that utilizes all their freedom. It will be a participatory civil society built by Hong Kongers. And for us to get there, our people have to regain that sort of mental freedom now. And I have to build toward that society right now. And that is why my team and I at the Hong Kong Democracy Council aspires to build a political diaspora. A diaspora where every member can fully realize and utilize their personal political power to take down their dictators together. Whether it's calling your congressional members, organizing protests, boycotting Chinese goods, monitoring company behaviors in your own industry, or even talking about the CCP in your PTA meetings or posting flyers around the neighborhood. There's so much more each of us can do and every one of us can be an activist that take down our dictatorship and build that future with us together. And when we're thinking and building about that political diaspora, in fact, we are already building that future, that future society we want to see. Every step in our movement right now is a piece to our future. And that is why I say our movement is our future. But who is our and who is we? In Hong Kong's movement, we have witnessed how social movements can really transcend the national boundaries and the medium limitations through technology. And in fact, transnational interactions are happening everywhere already. Look at how countries influence each other heavily, how dictators are cooperating across borders, and how our movements have been impacting each other greatly as well. For instance, Hong Kong's movement was inspired by the Arab Spring, by the Ukrainian Revolution, by the Taiwanese Sunflower Movement, and even by Occupy Wall Street in this very city. 
And similarly, Hong Kong's movement was referenced in the Catalonian Revolution, in the Chilean protests, and even in movements from our friends in the Milk Tea Alliance. You see, all this time, how we have been building upon each other efforts and how we have been actually building a movement together. And that is why Hong Kong is not just about Hong Kong or its movement. No, it's about the global movement for freedom that is struggling against totalitarianism around the world. There's nothing such as a partially free world. Partialness does not exist in freedom. The world is either free or not free. And that is why we have to fight for our collective future together. Our movement is our freedom. Our global movement for freedom is our global future of freedom. Now close your eyes, please, and imagine a world where everyone can get to enjoy freedom no matter where they are. When you read the newspaper, you wouldn't see that people miles away from you are suffering from a kind of freedom that you are enjoying or fighting for that freedom and cause suffering that you are enjoying. Now open your eyes and look around you. Look at the people around you in this room. These are the people that will be building that freedom, that future with you together because we have already started right now. Our movement is our future. Our global movement for freedom is our global future of freedom. Let's fight for our future collectively together right now. It will be a long battle. The dictators will go down and we will make our freedom and our future happen. Free all people. Thank you. <laughs>